Hey guys, it's your friendly neighborhood Dandelion here, aka PJ, and I'm really pleased to present this interview we did with Tasha Sonart from Pixar. If that name sounds familiar, it should. Uh, aside from working at Pixar and being the creator of Double Fine's Costume Quest, Tasha was at D23 this year when Square and Disney revealed the Toy Story world. Uh, Tasha is a consultant from Pixar on Kingdom Hearts 3 and has been helping Square bring the Toy Story world to life. This interview came together, like, super quickly, so it's a little different from the ones we've done in the past. I didn't have a lot of prep time, and I recorded it with Google Voice, so the audio isn't great, but I've put together full captions for the interview, so that should help. Uh, I had a small window of time for this interview and had strict restrictions not to ask about anything Kingdom Hearts 3 related that uh, hasn't been announced yet. Uh, but with that in mind, I, I'm really pleased with this interview. Talking to Tasha was great, um, and she was really, really nice. So I'm, I'm super happy to present this interview, and I hope you guys like it. Let's get started. Um, Tasha, just looking into your history and your background, it seems like you are the perfect person to be qualified for being a consultant for Pixar and Square Enix on Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about your past, going into CalArts and then Pixar and Double Fine and then back to Pixar. It seems like you've had quite the journey. Um, can we talk a little bit about how you got started with your interest in animation and video games and in film? Sure. So um, I guess I originally got interested in animation through comics. Um, I was always really into comic strips when I was a kid, and um, just, I just loved comics, and like, The Simpsons was like my favorite cartoon, and I learned about animation through a summer school program called California State Summer School for the Arts, and it's still going on, so if you live in California, <laughs> it's a good program to look into if you're like a high school student in California and you're into the arts. Um, and that was the first animation class that I took. Um, and from there, I was hooked. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I ended up going to CalArts and studying 2D animation. Um, so this was sort of before computer animation was really popular. It was kind of, it was just right. getting started. So when I was in college, Toy Story 1 came out, and I remember the people from Pixar came and talked about it, and I just, I thought it was really cool. And I always, growing up also, I really liked video games. I always, you know, ever since the Atari, uh, right. <laughs> I've been a, a gamer. And so computer animation seemed to me almost like merging these two things that I loved, which is comics and video games, um, into this one sort of art form that it really appealed to me. And at the time, a lot of animators didn't really want to work on the computer because they thought they would have to give up drawing, which is funny because now I spend more time in my day drawing than I do actually working. <laughs> I mean, I am drawing on the computer, but, you know. But um, <laughs> when I was at CalArts, um, we have this thing called the producer show, which is um, where all the students show their student films. And they have a portfolio day where different studios can come in and look at the students' work. And Pixar asked if I wanted to do an internship through that, um, through the the producer show and through the um, – the portfolio review, and of course I said yes because I, I was super excited. Um, <laughs> and after doing a summer internship at Pixar, then they asked if I would um, come and animate on A Bug's Life. So after doing the summer internship, I actually went back to school for another year, and then I went and came and worked at Pixar on A Bug's Life, and that was my first feature film. Wow. I mean, that's that's pretty awesome. I also, um, in your art, because I've also, I've perused a little bit of stuff that you've done, just your personal artwork, mm -hmm. and is it safe to assume that there are some um, JRPG influences? I, I can feel a little bit of, like, Earthbound in some of the stuff that you've done. Is, is that a fair assessment? Oh, yeah. Earthbound is probably my favorite video game of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a I classic, mean, right? Been, yeah, I mean... It, I, like, RPGs are really, like, my 
I just love RPGs, and especially Japanese RPGs. There's something really quirky about them that you don't get a lot of in American RPGs. Like they're willing to right. try weird stuff <laughs> that people <laughs> that people here would never think of. Um which really appeals to me. And also I just love cute things, so um, you know, the Japanese aesthetic really. I just really like it. Um Yeah. Yeah, so Earthbound I would say is one of my influences definitely and i just for some reason like it just is really unique to me this was before like pokemon and stuff but to see an rpg that was in a different setting that wasn't like a fantasy typical fantasy setting um was really interesting as well and i would say that is one of the things i love about kingdom hearts is it's not your typical like they've created their own unique world for it it's not like your typical um setting for an rpg so I, I just yeah. like games that sort of create a unique setting where you're just excited to explore it. And it's funny that you say that because when I, I was in the audience at D23 when you guys mm-hmm. unveiled the Toy Story world, mm-hmm. and when Sora and the group first jump into Andy's neighborhood, my first thought was, oh my gosh, this reminds me of Earthbound and setting, even though like mm-hmm. Andy's neighborhood has been around since the 90s, there's mm-hmm. just something about having a JRPG happen there. I was like, this reminds me of Earthbound. And then towards the end of the trailer when they're in Galaxy Toys um, and they're fighting the giant robots, I was like, whoa. Um, So just being able to experience that Toy Story is such a perfect choice for Kingdom Hearts, and we're so excited. And I'm also really excited that you in particular have been overseeing it because you've also not only worked with Disney and Pixar and Square Enix, but also at one of my other favorite game studios, Double Fine. Mm-hmm. Um, where a little bit of that aesthetic and a little bit of your, your taste and choices have also kind of bled over into other games. Um, for example, the one that you led, uh, Costume Quest. Mm-hmm. So I, I definitely see those influences there. It's interesting to see how you bounce back and forth. And there seems to be a lot of um, Double Fine and Pixar alumni, like a familial relationship where you guys just kind of bounce back and forth. Yeah, well... Um... Well, for starters, you know, we're both in the Bay Area, so, you know, that makes it easy because we don't, you know, if you wanted to work at the other studio, you don't have to move. (laughs) So, um, you know, and we have a lot of, you know, it's a very small industry, so a lot of people, like I knew Tim Schafer before I worked there through some mutual friends that worked at Pixar, and, you know, everyone kind of knows each other, and, uh, you know, we're all one happy family. (laughs) <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think also there's something about the aesthetics of both companies that are sort of similar where at least for my game that I led at Double Fine I wanted it to appeal to I wanted it to be a game that kids could play but also that parents could enjoy or that that sort of nostalgic feeling that I think adults feel often or can feel towards something like a Toy Story, um, right. where adults can relate to the nostalgia of it, but then kids can enjoy it for, like, different reasons. Um, and Kingdom Hearts does the same thing. Yeah, yeah, so that's something that it's definitely an aspect of both companies and of Kingdom Hearts that really appeals to me. I wouldn't say it's trying to appeal to everyone, but, like... Right. Um, there's something that's sort of, like, innocent about it, <laughs> you know, right. where it's not, like, you don't have to be afraid that your kids are going to watch you playing it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's, like, pure and innocent and just, like, joyous. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would so say yeah. that, that is, that's, that's definitely a trait that I see that connects all of these projects is mm-hmm. the earnest way right. of, of approaching storytelling. Um, I right. really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so it definitely seems like you are the perfect person to be the liaison between Disney and, and Square and working on the Toy Story franchise and the Kingdom Hearts franchise. So because of that, were you suggested or did you throw your name into the into the ring? How did you become involved with creating the Toy Story world in Kingdom Hearts 3? Um, so when I came back to Pixar after working at Double Fine, um, I was talking a lot with, we have a very small interactive group here. So it's, you know, only about three people. Um, but I was talking to them a lot about working with them on projects because they didn't have a person 
that was dedicated to their team who was a creative person, like a person that knows the characters and knows the stories. Um, and so they were really excited when I came back to Pixar because they were like, oh, my gosh, this is somebody who's had a long history with the company and has worked in games and wants to work on games. And so, you know, uh, Rob is the leader. Rob Rowe is the leader of our um our uh, interactive group here at Pixar. And so he was just really excited to have me working with their team in general. So I actually work on several interactive projects here. Um, and it's something I really love working on. And it's actually my main part of my job is in theme parks, but it's actually kind of similar to theme parks because I feel like you're building interactive art. Yeah, with theme parks being more like immersive now, especially too, yeah. I can definitely see that connection. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I do work on a lot of interactive projects, but when Rob mentioned to me that they were, you know, thinking of doing Kingdom Hearts, I was like, oh, my God. And so I basically freaked out. And <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, I want to work on that. Yes, we have to do that. It was sort of, I guess it was sort of like a mutual, you know, it just happened to work out well, and I really wanted to do it, and they really wanted me to help out with it. And so it just, every, all the pieces kind of fell into place. <laughs> That's so awesome. Um, yeah. Do you mind if we get into some of the technical aspects of, of development for the series um, without getting into the spoilers of things that haven't been announced, of course? Sure. For one thing, it looks absolutely gorgeous. This it, It's so exciting for us as Kingdom Hearts fans because, as you know, this is the first next-gen Kingdom Hearts title where we yes. can play the games on a console and have these amazing graphics. Kingdom Hearts has always been beautiful, but to have that kind of fidelity where you look like you're playing a Pixar movie is insane. Um, so, of course, it's absolutely beautiful. I know that Pixar and Square both have these strong commitments, detail, and quality. Um, so I, I can imagine that working on that very stringently, like you guys have knocked it out of the park. You mentioned a little bit um, at D23 that you were really excited to design Sora's Keyblade for the world and also to mm -hmm. work on the new outfits for Sora, Dolph, and Goofy. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about the design process for those? Yeah, so um, basically Square Enix, they did, you know, they'll do like the first pass of the stuff, and then it's kind of right. a back and forth sort of conversation. So um, sort of our, I guess you would say, Toy Story franchise expert is Bob Polly, who is a concept artist here and also designs a lot of characters and has been here for a really long time. And so he was in <laughs> on all those meetings when we were – talking about the design of the world, the design of the Keyblade, the design of the toy versions of Sora, Donald, and Goofy. Um, and there's just several rounds of back and forth of like, let's add seams to their joints to make them feel more toy-like, or let's make <laughs> the, the screws larger so that you can really feel like it's you know a toy. Because we definitely wanted to make them feel different then, you know, because there are actual action figures of Sora. <laughs> so right, we didn't want to make right. it just look like the actual action figure. We wanted to m almost make it more retro because Toy Story is all about retro toys. And right. make it look, we kind of emphasize the, sort of the blockiness of it. Just so that, like I feel as a player, that it's more fun to see a version of the characters that's different. <laughs> you want to see what they look like in that world. It's like, oh, fun, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Right. I really like it. I, I like that it's they're definitely designed to be familiar in the sense where, like, I can see that, like, oh, it's kind of Lego and how square it is, but it reminds me of, like, early 90s, late 80s anime, like, Gundam-style action figures, but it also reminds me of yeah. that, that, but it's totally unique. I think it's really yeah. interesting that, it's, that it looks like a blend of cultures of East and West, similar to how Kingdom Hearts itself is. Yeah, um, that was actually something that we did on purpose where when we were designing the toy store and when Square Enix was designing the other toys that would go in the toy store, like the, the enemy toys or just the ones on the shelves, that we definitely right. to we told them, like, this should look like the Japanese version of retro toys right. because this is a Japanese game and Sora is a Japanese character. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, so this, like... We wanted their Japanese flavor in, in the Toy Story style. 
So, right. so yeah, they do have toys that look like a Japanese, like a mech, you know, like the robots mm-hmm. that they fight with are, you know, very Japanese style. But we said, like, you know, because this is a Japanese toy store, then it makes sense. <laughs> and, it's, and I know Nomura has said that what we saw in the trailer is just the beginning of that store, that there are multiple levels with multiple gameplay mechanics and gimmicks, and it's so exciting to think about, oh, yeah. like, it's actually <laughs> exploring that toy store as a tiny toy version of Sora and actually mm-hmm. playing with the toys. That's so – it's so cool. And knowing that it's a new location – you know, that it's not Al's Toy Bar and it's not Pizza Planet. It's something new for us. It's really exciting for us. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so seeing that combination of new and old, a lot of a lot of fans have been praising the look of it, but they've also been wondering if Square has borrowed assets from previously existing Toy Story projects, whether the models and different assets were kind of borrowed from you guys or if they built everything from the ground up. So we gave them reference models. But then they built everything themselves. And I, Incredible. seriously, like when I see the stuff in the game, I am constantly amazed at how good it looks because they, they're they just, their attention to detail is amazing. <laughs> it is. Uh, so, we were able to pick down when it was taking place before right. you guys, before Namara said that it took place after Toy Story 2, based on like the stitching on the model of Woody's arm. How right. The <laughs> I in know. Toy Story 2. Like that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it, again, it's sort of like a back and forth conversation where, um, you know, they will send us their version of the model and then we review it and then we point out, um, areas where it could be better. But I, I mean, really overall, this is probably the best that our characters have looked outside of our movies because their, yeah. their attention to detail is, is really, really great. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And just seeing how big that world is in, in a way that we've never really been able to play before in a Kingdom Hearts game. And just the way the characters are alive, because, you know, so often when Kingdom Hearts does the Disney world, we'll see the main characters, but we might not get as much love from side characters because, you know, they've had to cut them for time, for resource right. allocations or whatever. But yeah. seeing, like, Sarge and Ham and Rex completely <laughs> animated – in yeah. the very first scene, like, it's amazing. It's absolutely incredible what you guys are being able to bring to the table right now. That's one thing about Toy Story is I think a, a, a hallmark of Toy Story, kind of a trait of Toy Story, is that they, there is this big group of characters. Like, if you only mm-hmm. had Buzz and Woody, I just don't think it would feel as much like Toy Story. Like, you wouldn't feel like you're really in Andy's room. You'd be like, it feels really empty. <laughs> right, it's you true. Know? So I think, you know, having that many characters was important in getting the feel of Toy Story in there. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, they've been doing an amazing job with the animation. Like, I've been reviewing the animation as they've been going along, and it's it's all looking so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really, yeah, it's just really fun, really fun stuff to review. I bet. It sounds like a dream job. Um, recently, it was announced that they're actually making toy versions of the toy versions of Sora, Dom, and Goofy. And <laughs> oh, they Goofy. are? I didn't hear that. Yeah. Oh, I'm um, so excited. We haven't seen any prototypes or anything, but that's what the, that's what the work for <laughs> Square was. Uh-huh. Um, so I was actually going to ask if you were excited to think about, like, merch and stuff that you've helped create being brought to life. Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. Like, I mean, I have a whole shelf now of Kingdom Hearts action figures, so I will definitely have to add those toys to my shelf because I totally thought that they should make those. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't my idea, but <laughs> well, <laughs> but um, no, but I mean, the other thing that we've been thinking is like it would be cool to see like the cosplay, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, I haven't seen anyone as Sword on the Goofy, but they've already made the key. Like I've seen cosplayers make the keyblade that you guys designed for Toy Story. Oh, sweet! <laughs> so I feel That's like awesome. it's just around the corner. As a creator, um, uh, is that like one of your favorite things to see people's interpretation of the work that you guys have done? Oh yeah, totally. Like I mean, that's. I think that's really one of the most fulfilling feelings of my job is when we get, like, fan mail, you know, from kids and, like, little kids' drawings or, like, yeah, it's just, like, you make 
you make this stuff and then you put it out there in the world and you hope that other people like it as much as you like it. And then seeing that back from people is is just really gratifying. Like when you hear um, about, um, you know, the joy that it brings people, it's 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 great. It's I mean, it's why we do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people are really excited for this. It was definitely my top pick for Kingdom Hearts 3 World. It sounds like Nomura has won a Toy Story in Kingdom Hearts since mm-hmm. the beginning. I'm so glad that it's actually coming to fruition. As a fan, like, I've been wanting to see Pixar in Kingdom Hearts for so long. So yeah. I know, like, how excited everyone else is going to be about it. <laughs> Absolutely. And as, as much as I wanted it earlier, now I, I'm I'm... I'm really pleased with it because if we had seen it earlier, we wouldn't have gotten the representation and the quality that we have with this current gen. Yeah, um, yeah, and that's true. And that's so exciting to me. What was the most important thing to you personally um, to translate from the Toy Story franchise into Kingdom Hearts? What, is, what aspect of the series did you want to remain faithful? Hmm. Um... I mean, I guess just as an animator, just making it feel believable is really important to me. So just making sure that Buzz and Woody and all the other characters feel like the characters. Um, Great. So, for example, sometimes, because all the animators are Japanese, sometimes they will do a gesture that is the correct gesture for them. (laughs) <laughs> and right. in Japanese culture, but it's something that like Buzz or Woody wouldn't do, and so sometimes yeah. I have to kind of, you know, point out like, oh, well, we don't do that here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and Buzz and Woody are supposed to be American characters, so they wouldn't, you know, bow, for example, or something like that. Yeah, I guess just making sure that the characters are believable, basically, don't do anything to out of character. <laughs> well, Tasha, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview with us. We really appreciate it. Um, hopefully in the future, next year, once the game is out and there's been some time, hopefully we can do something like this again uh, without the red tape and with, you know, kind of as a postmortem. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, that would be great. I'd be happy to. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, I'll edit all this together and I'll send you guys a copy of it. Um, really, I, I appreciate it so much. I hope you have a great day over there. Okay, thank you. Thank Looking you, forward to seeing it. Thank you. There you guys have it. I've got a lot of people to thank for this interview, of course. Uh, Tasha Sonart and Brianna Gardner from Pixar for helping to set this up. Uh, you heard her chime in a little bit there at the end. Um, she's been great. Everyone was great. Everyone from Pixar PR, it was great working with you guys. Thanks so much for the quick turnaround. Uh, another special thank you to Square Enix for approving the interview. We'd like to do more stuff like this in the future with people who work behind the scenes of the series, so let us know who you think we should interview next. I'm PJ from Cage Insider, and I'll see you again real soon.